All right, hello, welcome back to the podcast once again, everybody. PayPal and Patreon links are both down below for anybody who wants to support me. Only do so if you actually can. So, back to the West and uh, especially Southwestern United States, uh, the, a region which is still in a drought, not as uh, extreme or severe of a drought as it was a number of months ago. But no, the drought is not over. Uh, for some places, uh, like Northern California, it's better than it was. And even then, uh, most of those reservoirs have only regained less than or about half of the water that they lost last year. And they're soon going to enter the uh, time frame of the year this year uh, when they start to drop again. But that's neither here nor there for the moment. Uh, we are looking along the Colorado River, specifically at Lake Powell, also a little bit at Lake Mead. Lake Powell, an enormous reservoir along the Colorado River, similar to Lake Mead, uh, but without having a major population uh, center nearby that it also provides water to both serve as excess uh, water storage to release additional water down the Colorado River to make sure that uh, the water flow levels remain adequate to supply the real source of Colorado River water consumption, which is in fact, California, as they release their water constantly at a non-replenishing rate uh, for the last uh, two decades in particular, to make sure that the water levels of the river remain at uh, adequate flow to supply the Colorado River Aqueduct, which uh, takes the water over to Southern California, and especially over to the 18 million people of Los Angeles. And then some additional portion is uh, also required to be allowed to continue to flow down into Mexico. But anyways, Lake Powell, along with Lake Mead, uh, both serve to keep extra water for the purpose of releasing down the river to make sure the uh, flow remains adequate. And Lake Powell and Lake Mead, like most other reservoirs and rivers, uh, go through cycles through different periods of the year uh, where they regain some water level versus where they lose it based on seasonal and uh, annual patterns of rain, snow melt, evaporation, and stuff. But in general, overall, uh, they've both perpetually been uh, losing permanent water level over the course of time uh, throughout the last two decades or so, losing more most years uh, than they regain. And so even uh, during the uh, past couple months of drought relief, uh, Lake Mead has remained relatively flat, as it normally uh, does up until this point. Uh, at this point, they at this point, it normally starts regaining some, and it's regained a tiny bit, uh, but it's not regaining water level at the rate it uh, would be expected to even. And like Powell, over these past couple months of drought relief, has continued dropping. Uh, when we last spoke about it, uh, they were down to about 3,540 elevation feet of water level, as the U.S. lake system is measured in elevation feet or how high the surface of the water is above sea level. At full, Lake Powell would be at about 3,700. Its deepest point, uh, right behind the dam, goes all the way down to like 3,200. However, like every other reservoir, it's not some perfectly rectangular swimming pool. It has branching arm segments uh, that go off of it, which are very uh, dried up and near empty at the moment. And uh, once, you, once you get rid of the wider area volumetrically, and you're down to just the uh, the central canyon or central channel that's only like a thousand or a couple thousand feet wide, uh, then, you know, it's, it's kind of game over. So last time it was down to 3,540 elevation feet, which had it down to about only 30 or 29 percent of its total capacity. Uh, now it's continued dropping and is almost all the way down to uh, 3,532 elevation feet, which has it down around only 26% of its capacity now. Whereas Lake Mead is uh, down at around uh, 1,067 elevation feet, uh, where if it were full, it would be up at 1,225, and it has several hundred feet of depth, uh, just like Lake Powell does. However, the total depth is deceiving because you have to think volumetrically and uh, the shape of the reservoir and everything. And so Lake Mead is uh, down uh, close to 30% full. I think they're at 31 or 32 at the moment. And they're both still continuing to lose several percentage points each year, as low as a couple, as many as five or more. So there are only a few more years left until uh, the, there's going to be an actual problem. And the inner turmoil of uh, internal mass migration within the U.S. is going to start getting triggered with people leaving the U.S. and the Southwest. As that region, climate-wise, precipitation-wise, it was not meant to have the number of people in it uh, that currently live in it, 
nor was it really meant uh, for mass farming. But mass farming is yet still being done in the desert, being fed by irrigation, a lot of which is drawn off from the Colorado River. So also the eventual loss of uh, that section of food production is going to bring about its own problems along with it. But that's the end of uh, this quick summation for now. So thank you everybody for sticking around and listening. Uh, like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. There's also plenty of other episodes you can listen to. Not all of them are time frame specific. If you want to support me, PayPal and Patreon are both down below. Only do so if you actually can. You can go subscribe to my Catch channel if you want to support me for free. And also if you want to get to watch, you know, less depressing stuff. But that's it for this time, so no matter what happens to me, may God bless and protect all of you, and I will see you all around next time.